Welcome to this episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm going to be going over my review of the new Psych Plus, AS2 Pro, and Pro Max models. They pretty much listened to everything I told them to do about the original pump, so you're welcome. And let's get into this video. What I'm going to be going over is what comes in the box, what the similarities are between the Pro and Pro Max model, then going over the differences between the two models, then going into my testing that I did and use cases, then I'll be going over my final thoughts, which will include who I think each pump is for ideally, and my final thoughts of what I liked and disliked. Before we get started, I do want to mention they did send me these pumps for free, but I'm not by any means paid by them to, to say anything. This is all my own thoughts. But at the end of the video, if you do like these products, I do have an affiliate link. I would appreciate it because it does help support the channel and the links below. So let's get into what's in the box. Each box is going to include a set of instructions. The pump itself, which is already wrapped in the included silicone case, a USB-C cable, a hose, which does actually allow you to screw it into the pump itself, and have a quick, easy press it or Schrader connector at the end of it. It has the accessories to change the internal pump of the pump, and it has the accessories if you want to switch the actual main pump to a Schrader to be natively Schrader instead of the included Presta setup that's already in it, and a ball head adapter for any sports balls. So as far as similarities go, they're both still obviously mini electric pumps. They are both USB-C powered. They both have an LCD screen, which is going to show you your current desired PSI or bar, since it can switch between the two, and your three main buttons, which are gonna be your power, and then your up and down to adjust your bar or PSI, which you're able to do in one PSI increments, and your battery gauge, which will give you one out of three bars. And they do have a max output of 120 PSI. So let's get into the specs of the Pro model. Now the Pro model is gonna be the Goldilocks in the lineup, being the middle size between the three different models that they sell. This one is going to be about 5 mils thicker than the original pump. And for some of this video footage, you're going to see my Osmo action in there for a size comparison, which is basically your standard GoPro action camera size. So this just kind of gives you a scale. But you can see how that's about 5 mils thicker than the original pump itself. It is rated at 120 grams. Now, obviously, if you have the silicone case, which I recommend keeping on, and the hose, the overall weight's going to increase depending on what you bring with you. And it does do a full charge in just 30 minutes, again, by USB-C. And with that size bump, you do also get a bigger battery. The original pump has 300 milliamp hours. This has 420. And on the screen right now, and feel free to pause if you need more time, you can read the chart that Psych Plus posts on their website for how many pumps you're going to get for each of these individual higher sizes and the range of PSI that you're going to get. Now, my experience utilizing these pumps and the original one, those recommendations and amounts of time are pretty accurate in my testing. But obviously, if you're just topping off for slightly adjusting pressure, or maybe you just thought it's a little bit and were able to plug the tire quickly, obviously, you're going to get more amount of pumps out of each of these models. So then we're going to jump into the Pro Max. This is the biggest one in the lineup. So obviously, it's going to be the heaviest at 205 grams. Again, bare, but you can see here what it is with the silicone case and the hose. And this will have the biggest battery internally at 600 milliamp hours. And again, feel free to pause on this screen if you need to look at it a little bit longer, depending on what higher width you like riding. This gives you a kind of a ballpark of what to expect, again, from zero PSI to the stated PSI and that tire width. So obviously, being the biggest pump, you're going to get the most out of it when you're running really large gravel or mountain-sized tires. So that's going to lead me into testing. Now, as far as testing this pump goes, it works as advertised. I've been very happy with the original model, but like I mentioned in that video, these are going to have the LCD on the outside so you can see how much battery you have left and the exact PSI you want to go to. So in my testing, what I wanted to do is to have a control. Instead of having a tire and maybe have some leftover PSI in there, I wanted to use my tubeless blaster tank that I got from Bontrager. I don't remember the exact model name, but I wanted to pump this up because it's a large tank and it does go to extremely high PSI, but I put it right at 100, which is going to be more than I run in any of my current bikes, even my road bike. So I felt like this was a pretty accurate way to do it, and I can basically blast all the air out of that thing so I can make sure that it's down to zero. So as you can see during this footage, I was able to test the Pro versus the Pro Max. Now both were able to get up to the PSI. The main thing you're gonna notice between the two is two things. Is one, you can see that the Pro gets there, but it takes substantially longer if you look at percentages between the times. And the Pro Max obviously was the fastest of the two. Now the other thing is you can see that the battery indicator on the Pro did drop down into that two out of three bars where the Pro Max didn't. And that's really where, obviously, that battery life is going to come into play. Now, this is an extreme scenario. I would equate this to pumping up a mountain tire to a high PSI because of the volume of this tank. So both don't have any problems getting there. 
You can see that the ramp up to that PSI obviously slows down slightly near the end like it would in any style of pump, or even if you're doing a hand pump, it's going to struggle a little bit because you're kind of fighting that pressure. But both were able to get there fine. Now, I did notice that the Pro model did get warmer than the Pro Max. Obviously, being a bigger size, it's got more thermal capacity, so that's kind of expected. But I wanted to really push these pumps longer than most since most tires, depending on the PSI, are going to probably inflate in a minute or less. And pushing them beyond that is really where I wanted to see if they would fail or hit a overheating type scenario. But both were fine. And I have utilized both these pumps on that tank to get it up to their max PSI. Now, this tank does go to 160, so obviously higher than these pumps go to. But even on my floor pump that I've used on that thing before, it was a real big struggle to get it for me to get it to 160. And I will mention again, these are not going to be powerful enough to natively reseat a tire if you're out in the wild and you de-beat a tire. This is not going to be enough volume, even with the core move, to get that to reseat. Next is quickly, I'm going to get into price between the two models. You're going to be at $109 and $129. But don't click off this video if you think that's too much for these. I'm going to explain my reasoning why I think this is still a good value because of how you can utilize these pumps in the next section. I want to go over my final thoughts, which first I want to go over who I think each of these pump models are for, and I will include the original AS2 model pump that I reviewed earlier as well. That one I think is going to be best for mainly road cyclists that are going to be wanting something that's lightweight. They're not going to get a huge volume of tire, and you know they're going to use the thumb gauge. Any road ride I've ever done, I've never brought a tire gauge with me. So the thumb gauge is fine. It not having an LCD, I could live with in that scenario. Now, who I really think these other two models for is I think is a little more broad. The middle Goldilocks, let's call it the pro model. That one I really think is best suited for gravel riders or all road, whatever category you like to identify is, and commuters as well. Reason being is with that extra tire capacity that it can handle with the bigger battery and the PSI gauge on there, I think that really tailors to them because at least for me, if I do a gravel ride, for example, I'll typically ride out at road pressure that I'll set at home. And then when I get to the trail, I want to drop down. The beauty of both these pumps with the LCD is once you put it on the valve and it's on, it does act like a tire gauge. Basically, once that valve is kind of quickly pressed, it registers the PSI onto the LCD, which is really convenient to figure out where you're at. So that way you can actually use it kind of dual purpose to drop it down instead of having to buy a tire gauge to bring with you. Then when you're done with the ride, instead of either burning up your tires or wasting even more energy or time sitting there with a hand pump, you could re-pump up to road pressure, ride home. And so that's really where I think the, the Pro model really suits well and for commuters because you're running typically a bigger volume of tire. And yes, you might not care about the PSI you're getting to as much, but battery life on there is something good you want to have so you know how much you have left to either utilize it to get home or just air up a little bit, that kind of thing. That's where the biggest Max Pro pump, I really think, caters more toward either multi-day adventures or your mountain bike riders. Because obviously your volume of tire is going to go considerably up. You can get anything from a 2-inch to a 4-inch now if it's a fat bike. So that's really where I see that fitting in. If you, again, bike camp a lot, I could see you wanting the Pro Max just for the volume in extra days. And before you write in the comments, yes, I know you can utilize CO2 in a hand pump. But this is where I think the pros of this concept is if you look at it as a package and a replacement for a few things. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I understand the concept of have some of these items, but hear me out for a few reasons. Just like the original pump, if you don't have the strength or dexterity to get to the PSI that you want, this is a great alternative option. Two, especially in my eyes with the Pro or the Pro Max model, it can basically replace your need for a floor pump because as you can see, you can get multiple charges out of it and they charge relatively quickly. 30 to 45 minutes, depending if it's the Pro or the Max model. And that's, again, to get to full charge. You might not need that for what you need to get to. Secondly, you can obviously bring these with you. So they're portable. So you can put them in your hip bag, your handlebar bag, frame bag, wherever you want to carry this, or your saddle bag if you have the room for it, so that you have another option. You get to save the waste that you produce doing the CO2 canisters. And especially if you're running gravel or mountain tires, those can get kind of big and actually be a bigger volume overall of stuff to carry, depending on if you're carrying two or three of the 20 or 30 or 25 gram CO2 cartridges, but the cost overall in lifetime or years of, I think you could kind of start peeling that back because you're not buying a flow pump, you're not buying CO2s, and you got to have a great system to bring with you. Now, there are some downsides to it, which I get. Obviously, battery life and battery charges. And as I mentioned in my first video, 
when I commute with one, I have a little battery bank, but I had that even before I started carrying one of these pumps just for charging devices. So that was something I already brought with. But again, utilizing it more. And in most scenarios, if you're plugging a tire, you're not fully inflating it. You're just topping it back off. But you have the knowledge of knowing, hey, even if I get a full flat, I can do this two, three, four, five times, depending on the volume and size of tire that you're running. So if you really think of it as a system and what you're replacing and the added convenience of bringing it and having it be mobile, because obviously a flow pump is something is not something you're going to bring with you, there is some value add. Now, obviously a hand pump or a full size frame pump is never going to run out of air and is going to cost less than a, unless it's a really baller full size frame pump. But you can see the use cases for that. But comment below and I know you're going to tell me your thoughts anyway. So that's really where I see this fitting in. Now, the few things I would change about them because I think that they're almost perfect, minus obviously the downsides of it having a battery in it. But I think if they could use it to where you could reverse charge off of it, that would be killer because that way you could, in an emergency situation, again, I like to think mainly commuter mindset or on the go, hey, your phone's dead. I don't bring a battery bank with me on regular rides. Bringing this anyway, having that emergency battery bank, I didn't use it where it still has some charge in it, I think would be a great emergency feature. I don't know if that's something you can do in software, but that would be cool. Secondly, I would like a longer hose option, either as an accessory or to come with both sizes, just because I'd like to be able to set this on, screw the hose into the valve and then just let it sit on the ground and pump up the tire so I could go do something else if I need to, you know, put stuff back in a bag or whatever is going on. I'd like to kind of set it and forget it because obviously it's only going to pump to the PSI that you put on it. So I think that would be great. And the last thing that I had mentioned the first one and this uh, pump had the same issue, you can't charge it while using it. Uh, I don't know enough about electronics, but that would be a nicety, but I could feel, I could understand if that's not possible physically or electronically or whatever. But those are my three things that I think, I don't know if there's anything else you could really do about it. <laughs> so let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you agree or disagree, or if there's other features that you would thought of since you've watched these videos. So lastly, if you like this pump, remember you can buy it in the links below and it does help out the channel. Make sure you subscribe and turn it on so you can see all the other reviews and other styles of content and build projects coming on this channel soon. And thanks for watching this episode of Locked In. Let's get on.